Children in foster care have been shown to have higher rates of adverse childhood experiences and are at an increased risk for mental health problems. Since these problems are often harder to ameliorate given the severity and complexity of the issues, as well as the often transitory nature of this population, there is a need to systematically assess and review the existing interventions in this space, as well as reformulate what changes need to be made moving forward. The foster care program in Maryland features a family-to-family -family theme that encourages foster parents to play a more active role with the birth family in planning and carrying out the goals of a permanency plan, which includes reunification with parents, placement with relatives, and so on. Despite this, as of 2017, Maryland has close to 7,000 victims of abuse and neglect, a 5% rate per thousand children. Of these, 59% were neglected, 22% were abused, and 23% were sexually abused. They have been shown to have a higher risk of depression, post-traumatic stress, dissociation, ADHD, suicidal behavior, delinquency, substance abuse, and low self-esteem. They are thus in need of mental health services, but only a fraction actually receive these services. Between 50-80% to of children in foster care meet the criteria for a mental health disorder, which is significantly higher than the average in the general population. Not only are the children in foster care suffering from inadequately addressed mental health issues, but these problems plague them as they age out of the system as well. Any initiative proposed in this space is likely to involve and affect children in the foster care system with mental health issues, for the foster care system itself, mental health professionals, school administrations, foster parents, and caseworkers. The stakeholders we'll be prioritizing are the children in the foster care system themselves. The want to improve mental health services for foster care youth is one that is shared by many in the community. Since psychological status has such an impact on current states of behavior and future prospects of success, society as a whole has an investment in its betterment. Stakeholders such as government officials, schools, health systems, and families all need for the young, especially vulnerable groups, to be set up for success in order to ensure that society as a whole will function properly. I'm Kaylee Hatfield. I am a youth leader at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in West Baltimore, and I specifically work with the young women who are ages 12 to 18. We do have a few girls that have been placed in foster care probably about four times in the last two years um, and it's always such a struggle whenever they are placed they're a lot harder to get in contact with the biggest mental health concerns that we see would have to be anxiety and depression all of the girls struggle with anxiety because so much of their situations are out of their control, but specifically the girls that have been in and out of foster care um, show that a lot more and that's usually paired with the depression um, and lots of times different anger issues and aggression is shown. They don't want to be shown pity or they don't want to be um, babied in any way because they kind of grown up in such a hard situation they don't like feeling like they have a disability in any way. So much of these kids situation is beyond their control. Their, their parents don't have stable income or housing so they're constantly living with this friend or that cousin or this relative or or whoever bouncing from place to place to place and often it's not in the best living conditions um, and so I think that contributes a lot to it um, they're not always the safest conditions as well one of the girls um, actually ended up being stabbed by somebody that she was temporarily living with and and that's kind of what led her to be put into foster care for you know the second or third time and it's these type of events that lead to these mental health issues such as anxiety depression um, 
anger issues, just really traumatic events like that. I know that most of the girls have to initiate their own sessions with their counselors, but I feel like if the city did a better job of screening the kids for mental health issues and for potential situations that might need more guidance and, and counsel, um, that they would be much better off because they'd be able to receive the, the help that they actually need without you know, wondering who to go to or who to talk to or just being lost in that sense. The business model for the initiative to improve mental health services for foster care youth will be nonprofit. This makes it easier for the organization to accept the assistance of philanthropic entities that also may be interested in improving mental health in these adolescents. Additionally, having a nonprofit status will make it easier from a regulatory standpoint to get engage with other institutions such as schools, churches, and clinics. As a private, nonprofit community group, the organization will raise funds through a combination of philanthropy, grants, and service fees. Essentially, the service provided will be an administration of a defined, pre-approved screening panel known as the PHQA. This is an adapted set of questions for adolescents which screens for depression. Insurance companies have all ready to reimburse the screenings and assign it a CPT code. A partnership between schools and clinicians will be created to administer these screenings during school hours. As one can see, the financial foundation for a feasible campaign is already present. This initiative will fill in the gap for an operational effort. In order to even begin to answer the need for mental health support amongst foster care youth, we must be able to recognize the extent of the issue. Thus, the value proposition for the initiative we developed is as follows. For foster children who have a need for adequate mental health support, the school-based administration initiative is a coordinated screening effort which ensures that a vulnerable population requiring attention is identified and granted access to care. Unlike the current process that requires students to reach out for help on their own or wait for a caseworker's recognition of a need, this approach will proactively identify candidates and connect them to resources. The logic model for the initiative involves an identification of resources, activities, outputs, short and long-term goals, and finally, impact. The first resource to focus on are subject matter experts who can give feedback on the screening plan as well as implementation advice. In order to secure this input, the organization will need to interview the subject matter experts and receive the advice for improvement. The short-term goal will be to alter the plan in order to integrate the constructive feedback. However, the long-term vision will be to identify aspects that need future research. The impact to be gained from the effort is to ready the initiative for implementation and position it for success. The other resources to connect with would be the faculty from schools and cl clinicians from clinics. These individuals are from the two fields that this effort attempts to integrate. In order to secure their support and participation, the organization will need to negotiate contracts and recruit volunteers. The logistical output would be an operational agenda that results in a working community service model for the screening of the target population. The future gains to be made are the creation of connections for the growth of the program so that more students can gain from its efforts to identify need and secure functional assistance. The senior staff running the operations will be a combination of hospital administrators and educational administrators who represent their various institutions. Both of the parties that determine success or failure should be given a voice and a stake in the operations. The organizational model and implementation plan are structured to ensure that there is ample opportunity to collaborate with other programs and organizations. Community members such as church leaders and youth advocates will be invited to join planning committees to give their perspectives. The potential barriers in terms of lack of manpower and issues with regulatory approval 
will be eliminated by involving those who can give the approval and bring the resources. In essence, the threats will be turned into opportunities to create additional allies. This campaign has the potential to make healthy mental health for foster youth a reality. Society has a responsibility to ensure that the most vulnerable of our community receive the help that they need. The issue is too complex for one foster parent, one caseworker, one clinician, or one teacher to solve. However, since this initiative organizes different stakeholders to work together for success, a future where foster youth are supported in their journey to become the change makers of tomorrow will no longer be a fantasy, but a feasible and given fact.